Defining my personal style as a tall woman is something that I pride myself on because it's really, really hard, but it's definitely worth it. Welcome back to my channel, guys. It's your girl, Coco Styles. And on this channel, we talk about beauty, fashion, lifestyle, and styling. Today, I wanted to come to you, ladies, with ways that I like to define my personal style and how I got to where I am today. Now, I'm not saying I'm the most fashionable person in the world, <laughs> um, but I do like to buy things that work well with my body. It's hard, especially because brands don't cater to us. But these are some things that I love to do to define my personal style and I've been doing this for many, many years. So let's get into it. The first thing I love to do is take cues from my existing wardrobe. Meaning, what have I been buying? Am I gravitating towards the same things over and over? Here's an example, blazers. I love leather blazers. I love leather jackets, leather trench coats. It's just something that is ingrained in my brain and has been there since I was a small teenager in New York City. Something about leather that just does something for me. I'm always gonna buy leather pieces, whether it's pants, if it's leather gloves, I'm going to get it. But definitely those jackets and those blazers are number one. I take cues for my wardrobe. I'm looking at things that I already buy. And the reason why I buy those is because like I said, my eye is trained to look for things that are dear near and dear to my heart <laughs> like those blazers so lamarck is a brand that sells leather blazers you guys already know i have about four of them and i'm gonna get the rest of them because i absolutely love how they fit and the quality is unmatched they're not the cheapest however they fit my frame so i have to go with what works for me same thing when it comes to shoes as tall women we have larger feet and a lot of brands don't cater to us so we have to work with what works well with our body. So taking cues from my current wardrobe definitely helps me defining my personal style. The second thing I like to do is think about what I like and what I don't like. I can do a closet purge and when I'm getting rid of things for purging, to sell, to um, pretty much to trash if it's not in good condition, I'm looking at these items that I'm actually going to sell or donate saying to myself hmm when was the last time i wore this <laughs> so when i when i'm creating these piles i'm thinking of this in my head when was the last time i actually wore this item did i just buy it because it was on sale you guys already know how i feel about sale shopping it is a no-go did i buy it because it was on sale have i had this for over a year or two and it's just sitting here so i like to think about things like that when i'm actually doing my purge because that is going to help me to determine what i have not been wearing because i do not like trends are here to stay they're never going to go anywhere but they're not meant for everyone's body everyone can't pull it off some girls are like five six everything looks great on them some girls are five nine everything looks great on them but then you have some of us who are tall we just struggle to find things that actually fit our frame properly and it's a struggle so definitely understanding what i like and what i don't like helps me define my personal style the third thing is i like to create mood boards and when you hear mood boards you're probably like oh it's just a ton of pictures of people with outfits that you like not necessarily when i'm adding photos to this mood board i'm looking at pieces that are standing out in the photo right so it could be possibly a pair of shoes in a photo it could be the lady in the background in the photo that has on a nice burgundy jacket something like that there's something in this photo that i absolutely love it could be the lady's earring it could just be a color so when i'm creating my mood board i'm thinking about the color the style the silhouette fabric all of those things are taken into account when i'm creating this mood board why because it's a mood board and it's a huge picture of what i want my wardrobe aesthetics to look like so if you have not created a mood board yet for your wardrobe aesthetic do it it sounds very cliche but i'm telling you it definitely works when you are trying to define your personal style the fourth thing I like to do is find signature pieces. I like to think about five to seven pieces that are signature to my style. It may not be that many, but that is the goal to have those pieces always in my wardrobe. And that can be, again, leather blazers, it can be leather gloves, it can be pumps, it can be hats, it can be accessories, necklaces, 
bags, whatever it is, it's something that I know that I always gravitate towards when I'm shopping. Again, those blazers, I'm always gonna go to a section with blazers because blazers look really well on me, especially if they have nice shoulders. As a girl with broad shoulders, we typically should stay away from <laughs> shoulder pads, but a slight shoulder pad definitely makes me feel good and feel structured in my clothes, so I gear towards them. So that's another thing that I like to do is to find signature pieces that's gonna work well with my wardrobe and that I absolutely love and that I will be known for when people see me. The fifth thing is I like to build my outfits around my signature pieces, meaning if I wanna wear a hat, a fedora hat, right? I am going to build my outfit around the hat. It's a really good way to create an outfit. Building an outfit is not the easiest. A lot of girls need outfit formula. Like, oh, why do you need an outfit formula? Some women actually do need outfit formulas to get dressed. Everyone is not blessed with looking at something and creating a really amazing outfit just looking at it. We all do not know how to do that. So I like to build outfits around my signature pieces. So if I like my fedora hats again, I'm going to build the outfit around it. Do I want to wear it tomboyish today? Do I want to wear it very classy today? That is how I'm going to build my outfit around my signature pieces because those are the items that I am going to be known for and that I am known for for wearing and people know when they see that they're going to see Coco, right? <laughs> so that's the other thing I like to do is build an outfit or build my outfits around my signature pieces. The last thing I like to do is find investment pieces that are going to be around for a long time. Signature, signature pieces is one thing because they don't necessarily have to be a ton of money, but investment pieces is something that I'm always gonna go for first. Again, leather jackets are not cheap, okay? Shoes are not cheap, especially if you want something of good quality. Bags are not cheap, and some of these accessories are not cheap either. So when it comes to me buying investment pieces, I'm looking at how many times can I wear this um, investment piece with the things that I currently have in my wardrobe. I have a ton of blazers and jackets, okay? <laughs> They're not cheap. But I'll tell you this, if I throw one of those jackets on with a plain pair of jeans and a pair of shoes, it's going to look elevated because the quality of those outer pieces are top notch. So people are going to assume that everything else that I have on is really expensive and it may not be. My jacket is going to cost, but I may have on a pair of Zara jeans, right? Let me not sleep on Zara because they jeans have been really nice these days. But investment pieces are something that I have always been doing as since I was a young child as well. And I'm gonna say young, like mm, ninth grade. Uh, being from New York, shopping at Century 21 was a big thing for us because they had designer pieces for like really reasonable prices. So I was very good at finding things that actually worked well with my body that were great, great, great quality. Roberto Cavalli, was my first pair of, well, okay, Roberto, Roberto Cavalli and Versace was my first two pair of designer jeans that actually fit my frame. I had a friend who was also tall like me and we both struggled, but when we came across these jeans, oh, we were super, super happy. I think she was like 5'10 and I was six feet. Yeah, but we shopped at a lot of the same places because we were both similar in height. But the struggle was real for us trying to find things, but we always knew that investment pieces will always work well with our wardrobe. And it would be those pieces that will make a plain outfit look fabulous. So for me, those are the things that I did and still do to this day when I am creating my signature style or remaining, remaining in my current signature style phase. So that can also change as well, especially with the trends and stuff changing. I never was into anything big at the bottom, right? But I do like a looser fitting pants. I'm so over skinny jeans. <laughs> I hope they never come back. <laughs> um, loose fitting pants are better and they're much more comfortable. So that's something that I actually incorporated in my wardrobe within the last couple of years because I hadn't done that before. But my personal style is changing probably every, I wanna say like every year. I'm, I'm not gonna say completely changing, but I'm adding in things that could actually 
make my wardrobe better, make my clothes look better on my body, and make my style look better. So those are some of the things that I did to define my personal style as a tall woman. If you are a tall woman, let me say five, I'm just gonna say five, nine and up. Mm, let me say five, nine and up. If you have figured out your signature style, if you haven't, what are some of the things that you are struggling with? I wanna talk about it because the struggle is real for us and a lot of people don't talk about it. There's not a lot of platforms for tall women, so the few that's out there, it's just not a, it's not a ton of them. I feel like even those groups, they're still not that big. But let's get the conversation started. Let's talk about those questions that I just asked. And thank you guys for tuning in. If you stay to the end of this video, please comment Coco We See You. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Coco Styles NYC and Coco Styles NY. And my personal style blog, Coco Styles NYC. And my style services, Coco Styles NY.com. And I'm on Tickety, Tickety Talk, Coco Styles NYC. And guys, I'm gonna show you guys a picture of my OOTD today. I have on a pair of Zara pants. These are Zara jeans. Their wide leg jeans are actually really, really nice. They're really long. I'm six feet tall. I can wear like a slight heel, probably like a three inch heel, and they still look good. My top is from the Frankie shop. It's an oversized satin top. Their oversized tops are amazing on us guys. They're not super oversized, like they would fit an average height girl, but they're big enough to give us that feel. And my shoes are from Stuart Weissman. My bag is my Gucci clutch. I think it's my Ophidia, Ophidia clutch, yeah. And what else do I have on? My gold accessories, I kept it really chill today. I have to buy some more accessories guys, but that is my outfit for this video. And I will try to tag, well the shirt is out of stock over there in the jeans. I don't think they have these either <laughs> but um I'll put everything in the description bar as to where my outfit is from and I will catch you guys in the next one bye guys